So you may have heard of this little company called Xiaomi. They're making smartphones of all sorts and they are all over the news today because apparently they have partnered with Sony. They have sunk $15 million, I believe, of their own money into a project to create a camera sensor that is absolutely ridiculous and could potentially destroy every other camera on the market. Let's talk about it in this video. Let's start off with a post that someone from Xiaomi, Xiaomi phones made on Weibo, Weibo. I still don't know how to pronounce this and I refuse to look it up, but here we go. Xiaomi phones on Weibo, maybe. They say the Xiaomi Mi 12 S Ultra is powered by the new Sony IMX 989. This is a sensor that heretofore has not existed, okay? This is not something in any other phone. It says full one inch. This is translated from Chinese, so I don't know what they mean by outsole, but what they mean is it's a full, it's a one inch sensor. We're going to talk a lot about what a one inch sensor is, what that means here shortly. Sony's largest mobile phone camera sensor, faster focusing speed, better dynamic range, Xiaomi 12S Ultra mobile phone image has officially entered the complete one inch era. So the first thing we have to clear up is what actually is a one inch sensor. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Shane, I know what measurements are. Okay. It's a sensor. It's a little rectangle and it's going to be one inch in some diagonal perhaps in some way. Well, it turns out, no, that's not actually the case at all. This sensor, while they say it's a one inch sensor and there have been several other one inch sensors in phones, also of course in point and shoots and things like that, they're not actually one inch in any dimension. So why is that? The first thing we have to talk about is that. So let's look at this thing here. That is a CRT tube. A, I believe it is a cathode ray tube is what CRT does in fact stand for. And for the longest time, whether it was your CRT TV or in cameras and so forth, this is something that was inside of a TV and a camera. And in this cathode ray tube, there would be electrons moving back and forth and there's magnets involved and so forth and so on. That's not super duper relevant. We don't need to get into the physics here, but basically at the end of this CRT tube, there would be a sensor that this stuff would come out of. It would hit the sensor. And of course, that's the sound of a photo being taken. And so when they talked about a one inch sensor, really what we were talking about here is crazy. As this may sound to you, we are effectively saying this sensor, if it were back in ye olden times, there would be a CRT tube associated with this sensor. And the tube that would be required for a sensor of this size would have a diameter of one inch. So when we say one inch sensor, it's not one inch. That's just how big a hypothetical CRT2 would have to be to interface properly with this sensor. It's very confusing. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why we're doing that in this modern time. Why can't we just say the sensor is what it is? Because an actual one inch sensor is actually about half an inch by about a third of an inch, more or less. Now, don't get me wrong. This thing is still massive. When you see it compared to the IMX 707, which I believe was in the Xiaomi 12, not the S Ultra, but the current Xiaomi 12, the IMX 766, or even the iPhone 13 Pro Max, look how much bigger this sensor is than all of these other sensors. I'm aware that it says one inch. That's a lie. That's not true. <laughs> And typically when you have a sensor that gets bigger and bigger, what you're going to also have in relation to this are larger and larger pixels. With this IMX 989, we're apparently going to be getting 1.5 micrometer pixels. That is very, very large. And the larger the pixel, the more light it can absorb. Of course, the larger the sensor, the more light it can absorb. And that's pretty much always a good thing in photography. There's a lot of great benefits to being able to take in more light. So long as you're not obviously getting, uh, there's this thing is too much light, take a photo of the sun, that's difficult. You may have also seen that Samsung is working on a 200 megapixel sensor. This IMX sensor we're talking about here is only 50 megapixels. So you may be saying to yourself, well, 200 is a bigger number than 50. And that is absolutely true, but there's a lot more that goes into this. So the Samsung product is going to have 0.64 micrometer pixels. And because basically what they're doing is they're trying to squeeze higher and higher resolutions into a smaller space. This Sony thing is larger than what Samsung is doing. 
And that's why when you see these super high-res cameras, like what we have in some other Samsung devices, the 108 megapixel, so forth and so on, they do what's called pixel binning, where they make up for the fact that their individual pixels are quite small by binning them. So rather than using one pixel, they put four together into one super pixel, if you will. And that's kind of how they get around that, how they get a larger pixel size. So these are two sort of differing approaches to try and solve for better photography on mobile devices. It's also also important to point out that like I said earlier we have seen one inch sensors in cameras on mobile smartphones already. Like has done this, Aquos has done this, Sony has already done this. Now the biggest difference there is that all of those sensors to my knowledge were in fact sensors meant for actual cameras. I think all of those were from Sony cameras and then they sort of just moved it into a phone and most of them were actually cropped in. So you have the sensor itself, but the lens that was gonna go over it, you, you didn't actually use all of the sensor because it's just really freaking big. Now, whether or not that's going to be the case with this device, we don't know yet. Is this going to be cropped in? Is this actually going to use the full sensor? We don't know yet. When we look at the images we have purportedly of the 12S Ultra, this is an absolutely massive camera bump. So perhaps they're going to be the ones to actually take full advantage of that sensor. It looks like we're going to get a, maybe a couple of periscope lenses, maybe one going that way, one going this way or that way, or who knows, a couple of periscopes, a wide angle, then an absolutely massive one inch sensor from Sony and Xiaomi has already shown us multiple times that they kind of understand computational photography as well. They tend to do a really good job with this. So you pair that with what might be the best sensor on the market and you're gonna get really good detail, incredible low light. You also tend to get a more shallow depth of field. And I know a lot of people will say, no Shane, it's aperture that makes the difference on depth of field, but we're gonna have both. We're gonna have probably a very large aperture, but if you take two cameras and they have the same aperture, but one has a larger sensor than the other, the larger sensor will have more shallow depth of field. I've looked into this, apparently it's true. So you add it all up, and you've got a camera that could feasibly take the throne as the best smartphone camera on the market. And it, honestly, if we take one last look at these, the size comparison here, it really is incredible how good Apple's camera is considering how tiny the sensor is compared to these other ones. And that really hammers home how important that image signal processing pipeline is, the computational photography, because Apple kind of has done the same thing that Google did for a long time. They used okay hardware and just used a lot of AI and software to make stuff look really good. Well, now we live in a world where a lot of companies have pretty good AI, pretty good software, but now they're also spending lots of money to have ludicrously ridiculous camera hardware on top of that. And I mean, if we go back to the image that is supposed to be this phone, look at that camera hardware. Can you tell what their focus might be on this phone? I'm thinking it might be the camera. So at any rate, guys, that is pretty much what we know about the Xiaomi 12S Ultra in terms of this camera setup. This device is launching in China on July the 4th, and we don't currently have details as to a global launch just yet. Expect top of the line specs, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Also Leica glass over the top of this incredible sensor. And that does make a difference when it comes to glare and clarity. And of course, as we get more details, I will bring them to you here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.